Hi, today I have a Fender Tweed Pro from 1954. And you may recognize this amp from a video I released a while back. And you should definitely check that video out if you want to hear what this amp sounds like. Now the customer complained that the amp has an odd smell to it. So let's take it into the lab and see if we can get to the bottom of it. Here she is. The Tweed covering is looking very aged. It certainly looks like the original covering. The control plate is looking a bit faded. As you can see, it's a very simple amp, just two volumes and a tone control. The circuit number is 5C5. It's a cathode bias class AB amp loaded with 6L6GC power valves. The coolest thing about this amp for me is the original Alnico 15 inch Jensen speaker. It's a P15N, which Jensen still make, but I doubt a modern one's going to sound exactly like this vintage one. Here's the circuit board. Quite a few original components here. Original molded paper coupling caps, big carbon composite resistors. This one seems to have been replaced. Also the electrolytic cathode bypass cap is new. And all the filter caps are obviously not original. They are branded Reefer, which I believe are now sold under the Kemet brand. I doubt the valves are original given the age of the amp. Maybe NOS replacements? Flipping it around. The mains transformer is a decent size, that's nice to see. It's by the Triad Transformer Corporation. Part number 6516, as it should be. This one looks original to me. The output transformer also looks original. Part number 1846. But look here, is this black colour the sign of burned insulation? Could that have been what the customer was smelling? Or does it just look like that because it's old? Let's test the output transformer to see if it's working correctly. I've removed the output and rectifier valves and I'm going to begin by measuring the DC resistance of the windings. So we've got between 0.5 and 0.6 ohms on the secondary. Hundred and ten ohms on one half of the primary. And 124 on the other. Now let's measure the resistance between primary and secondary. Roughly 1.5 meg. Nothing out of the ordinary in the resistance readings. Right, now I'm going to hook the secondary up to my variac. I'm going to slowly increase the voltage to about 5 volts while measuring the current through the secondary. I would expect it to be less than 100 milliamps. So that test passed just fine. I've now put a 5 volt 1 kilohertz sine wave across the secondary I'm going to measure the reflected voltage across the primary. This will give us the turns ratio of the transformer. So the primary voltage is 141.5 volts. And the voltage across each half of the primary is exactly the same. So both halves are perfectly balanced. The turns ratio is 28.3 and impedance ratio 800. So the transformer will match the 6K anode to anode impedance of a pair of 6 or 6s to 7.5 ohms, which is pretty much exactly as it should be, since this amp would have been designed for 6L6s. But this amp has 6L6 GCs in it, and in this case the 5K anode to anode impedance will match to 6.25 ohms. So there will be a little loss in efficiency with an 8 ohm speaker, but nothing to concern us. Let's check the bias of the power valves. With the amp powered up, I measured the HT voltage to be 397 volts, the screen voltage to be 330 volts, the cathode voltage 26 volts, and the anode voltage 391 volts. So we know the voltage drop across half the output transformer primary, and we measured the DC resistance earlier, so we can calculate the current through the anode to be 52 milliamps. Using this value together with the measured voltage drop across the valve, we can calculate the anode dissipation to be 19 watts at idle. And this is well within the max dissipation of 30 watts of a 6L6 GC. So everything's looking okay here. Now that I've checked that the bias is okay, it's time to check that the amp, and output transformer of course, is performing correctly under load. For this I'm going to do a series of 1 kHz sine wave tests in short bursts. I first want to measure the screen voltage under load. As this amp uses a resistor capacitor filter, 
rather than a choke capacitor filter for the screen supply, there'll be some sag of the screen voltage under load, so let's measure it. So we see that the screen voltage sags to 290 volts and the HT to 390 volts under load. Let's estimate the output power of this amp by looking at the 6L6GC characteristic curves. The curves on the right are for a 400 volt screen voltage, but we can translate these curves to those for a 290 volt screen voltage by plotting the 290 volt curve on the transfer characteristics on the left. We're only interested in the max voltage swing, so we want to be able to plot the zero volt grid curve for a screen voltage of 290 volts. We find that the zero volt grid curve corresponds to the minus 11 volt grid curve of the 400 volt line. And we can draw a curve in the appropriate position on the right hand side. Now let's draw an AC load line for the class B condition where one valve is cut off. The reflected impedance onto the half of the OT primary for the conducting valve is 1400 ohms. Add to that the 150 ohm of DC resistance that we measured before, we get an anode load of 1515 ohms. The AC load line will intersect the Y axis at 257 milliamps. Our load line intersects the zero volt grid curve at 90 volts, but this voltage represents the anode to cathode voltage to which we must add the cathode voltage to get the minimum anode voltage. We can now read off the peak current as 180 milliamps. So at max signal swing, the voltage across each half of the transformer primary is 274 volts, and the max positive voltage is twice that, 548 volts. The headroom of the primary is 387 volts RMS. On the secondary, there will be a voltage drop across the secondary DC resistance of 0.9 volts, and the expected output headroom is 12.7 volts RMS. The expected output power is then 23 watts. Let's see what the actual power output is. Mm, it's starting to clip here. Notice it's clipping earlier on the bottom half. That's due to the simplistic phase inverter design of this amp. As you can see, the measured values are a bit lower than what I calculated, but you wouldn't expect them to be the same since the characteristics of the valves in the amp won't be exactly the same as the graph I worked from. The values are still within an acceptable range. The theoretical maximum voltage across the output transformer primary is twice the HT voltage. We'll get a higher swing by running the output into a higher impedance. If we were to plot a 16 ohm load line, it would look like this, and the peak voltage will have increased by twice this amount. We can increase the load impedance by using a reactive load at a higher frequency. Let's take a 3 kHz test signal and run it into an 8 ohm reactive load. The impedance at 3 kHz will be around 15 to 20 ohms. Here I measured a peak voltage of 735 volts. Even at this voltage, I didn't see any sparks fly, any smoke, or smell anything at all from the output transformer. So I think it's fine. Okay, so I gave this amp a thorough checkup and I couldn't find anything wrong with it at all, really. Don't know where that smell was coming from that the customer experienced, but I wasn't able to reproduce it. So I'm just going to have to give the amp back to him and hope that the problem doesn't recur. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Check me out on Instagram at Rajani Amps. Check me out online at rajaniamps.com. And I hope to see you next time.